Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio and welcome to Nebula 2. I am in the process of making this uh, rather strange, small-bodied, electroacoustic style instrument of insanity. And, uh, well, I'm having a total blast. It started out as one thing, it's become this, but you're most of the way through the series. You know all of this. So, well, today... Today was supposed to be yesterday. Yesterday I managed to procrastinate the entire day away. Uh, I am... I was talking to a violin maker friend of mine and when I told her what I was supposed to be doing, uh, instead of talking to her, she said, ha, um, yes, I understand why you're talking to me and not doing your work. Today I am going to figure out the neck break angle and how I'm going to sort out this Spanish joint. Essentially, we, I made the neck thinking that this was going to be an electric guitar and a, sort of a deep set neck tenon kind of a thing, multi-scale. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to, I think, at this, at this point, I'm going to have a Spanish neck joint where the sides actually are set into the neck itself and then the top gets glued on the over like that. Uh, it is not going to be quite stable enough. Normally a guitar neck, it will be in the end. Normally something like this will be set into a, a, a heel block or a block here and uh, that helps spread the pressure underneath the top as well. So as well as sorting that out and then putting those in, uh, I'm going to have to glue some extra pieces in, probably on the sides, just to tie the top and the back and the sides of the neck together. <sighs> We're getting there. This is fun. It is not traditional. Do not take my bracing techniques, etc. as wrote. This is not, this is not the way it should necessarily be done. Not wrong, but it's not right for a proper acoustic guitar. Okay, that being said, well, here's how we got here. That is what I'm after. Burn it. Today, the fun begins. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! Squirrel. Ooh. Because I started this neck out and this instrument out as something different, uh, it was going to be set into a solid body and did not need to be that deep, so I just made a neck blank, a random depth uh, that was more than I required, and was done with that. The problem is, I turned into an acoustic kind of build, I've made the body deeper, and the neck isn't actually now, I don't think, deep enough, and it's definitely not at an angle, it should be quite straight. So I'm going to have to build up the lower section at an angle, and that's what I need to figure out now, what angle do I need? I'm going to clamp the neck down to a flat piece of wood and see where we are at at this stage. How high is, will the strings be over the substrate? And what do I need to do to fix it? Onwards. In the abstract, working out 
a break angle is scary. Uh, mathematics is, is, I mean, saying it's not my strong point is under, it's, it's, a, it's a vast understatement. I just tried to actually physically work out 325 minus 66 without a calculator because my phone is updating and I got it wrong. That's me in maths. I've got dyscalculia and numbers just don't work for me. Uh, <laughs> I like calculators. Okay, now, that being said, if you sit down and draw the whole thing out to scale, it's so easy. So easy. You have a fixed point. I want my bridge to be 18 millimeters high, for example. My frets are so high, my fretboard is so so deep, etc. Put these things down on a piece of paper that is that and, and, and draw it accurately, and you don't even need to know what the angle actually is. You just say, well, here's my neck. At this point I needed to be 48 millimeters deep, and at this point I needed to be 52 millimeters deep. That will give me my angle. And this works however you're working out, so whatever you're working out, whether it's a, a, a set neck for a Les Paul type or something like this, or an acoustic, or a jazz guitar, or a through neck, you know, it's not, should not be scary. As long as you can draw and measure accurately, you're 99% of the way there. So as this currently stands, that's my string with a very low action over the uh, over the frets, you've got the fretboard in. I've drawn in the depth of the body as it as it is at these points, albeit there's a little bit of a curve I guesstimated, shall we say. But as that stands, my bridge will be eight, nine millimeters high because that's what it is. In reality, what I actually want to use the other side of the ruler. What I actually want is a bridge somewhere around 16, 17 millimeters high. Okay, which is, which is fine. We can do that, but it involves all sorts of things. So, so very basically, I can either have a line coming from the end of the fretboard here to the bridge, and that's where my top is, and I'll move, every, I'll move this line next, uh, or, or do that. And I think we're gonna do that. Now, the issue is, that my top isn't actually straight. My top is on a is on a curve. So essentially, at this point here, I've probably got a couple of millimeters difference. So we will end up like that. Or thereabouts. And that'll do nicely. This also gives me a little bit more room for the neck mounted pickup, which will be there. Okay. We had our very old, very uncared for apple tree trimmed, and now I have this pile. But the birds love it for what it's worth. Hold on, am I procrastinating? Squirrels, birds, chickens? I think I'm avoiding this job, still, while doing it. Here's where we stand. I've double checked the position of the bridge here, how deep that is gonna be between the, the top, at least the bottom of the top. Okay, so I need to put that into my calculations actually. The bottom of the top, etc. So in this drawing, I've got a little bit wrong. I need to add the thickness of the top on here and here, okay? Now, with those in place, I've got 45, 48 millimeters, and at the bridge, 53. That is where my body is. And that is where I want my neck to be as well, 
for the bridge. All I need to do now is translate that into the neck. The issue I've got is my neck blank is 45 millimeters and 45 millimeters. So I need to add something on there. The other consideration is the bridge height. Now I blithely said, hey, 18 millimeters, 15, 16, 18 millimeters. I need to consider the construction of this instrument and what it is for. The higher the bridge, uh, the more string tension we've got pushing down on the top and the more sound will drive. This ruler here is at roughly the break angle because we're gonna have the strings fitted to the end uh, in the sort of invisible bridge that we did last time. <sighs> I don't have an arch top construction. I've got this steel string construction and they don't generally have 18 millimeter high bridges, do they? I am making a carved bridge. It is gonna be jazz guitar style, but it's gonna be this height. So about 14, 15 millimeters high. And that will not put too much pressure on this top, but will also drive some sound. Anyway, I have lowered that down to take into account the thickness of the top. I've drawn the top in and we now have I've double checked all of the dimensions. We know what we're doing. I now need to transfer this over to the neck. So at the 16th fret, I need it to be 45 millimeters thick. And at the end of the fretboard, I need it to be 48 millimeters thick, which is three millimeters thicker than it currently is. So essentially, I need to remove three mil from here and then put on a three millimeter facing of burl maple, which is perfect because that's how thick it is. The one issue is at the end of my fretboard, that is exactly the thickness that I require it to be, the depth, thickness and depth. It's exactly, it's exactly what I need. And that's fine if that was my whole gluing surface, plane from here to there, bloop, and you've got your angle. What you would also have is that wedge-shaped gap underneath. So I need to figure out what do I want to do? Do I want to just glue the neck in at the, at the end there and be as was one of the options? Uh, or do I want to make a wedge here? So the other option is to have six millimeters added, which would be two of those chunks of wood with a nice veneer in between. And that takes us down to here, which is actually further in than we were talking about anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's the, uh, that is the thing. So what do I do? We could go two ways and we're gonna go the one that looks better. Uh, so yeah. Off. Thank you, chicken. Okay, the camera was at an angle. So I wasn't blowing dust directly on it, and I like the smell of this, you know, torrified sycamore. Sue me. We're there, we're there. And that's my angle. I think it's time for a hand plane. Low angle, for fun. If you've ever worked with torrified maple, you know, you know.
So that's fine, that's our 16th fret. Okay, so I'm gonna glue the veneer on uh, the back. There's gonna be a black veneer and then some of the burl maple will do that next. I have to make sure that this neck is set. I've, I've set the angle, that's perfectly fine. It needs to be in the body absolutely square with the center line. That's the next stage. MDF top guitar. The tiniest square. Moving forward, I am going to glue on the veneer and the burl maple to bring this up to thickness. It's gonna look stunning. Still got these in. That was a moderately successful glue up. It, life gets complicated when you have veneers in between pieces of wood and slippery, sloppery glue. Uh, this would have been a perfect, perfect case study for that salt trick. There we go. Onwards. While that is curing, I'm going to remove the temporary block of wood that's just holding the, the two sides of the ribs together and prepare for the next stage. Oh yes, come on now. <sighs> to the neck.
<laughs> okay, I am loving this. I'm loving this. I want to get it in, but I also want to finesse this carving. I'm going to get it in, see what it looks like, and then finesse the carving to fit. That's the way to do it. Uh, while I was doing that, I was thinking, you guys need to check out... Uh, there's a new series and a new YouTube channel uh, that has been filmed by Ken Parker of Parker Guitars fame, talking all about building archtop guitars. Uh, one of you uh, let me know in a comment that I needed to check it out because <clears throat> I did, and I did, and uh, I'm telling the rest of you, go, subscribe. Uh, I think the series is called Arch Toppery. I'm three or four videos in at the moment, and quite frankly, uh, I want to take a day or two off and watch them all. So uh, if you're remotely interested in building guitars, check it out. Tell them I sent you. Why not? Um, yeah, incredible. Very, very interesting. And uh, it's going to have a direct bearing on what I do with the bridge on this guitar, uh, just for starters. So next up, I need to finalize the bottom of the neck joint. That is still relatively rough, so a little bit of planing, a little bit of sanding. I'm going to go over to the oscillating spindle sander and clean up the end of the neck. And then I need to work out and mark on the angle of the ribs cutting into the side of the neck. I think it's actually going to be relatively straightforward, he says. Famous last words? To make sure that I know exactly where to put these lines and make the cuts for, to, to basically slot the neck down over the sides, I need to make sure that the neck is square with the rest of the body. So I'm going to mark out my center line with a couple of pieces of masking tape, then tape after that a long rule down the center of the, uh, the neck, and I will line that up with the center point at the end. Uh, I've said it before, I will say it again, your center line, your center line is really rather important. What we've got is a little square on the end, marked up with the center line. Earlier on in the process, I marked out the two tiny little lines, which you can't see. It's one there and one there. Uh, and that was having worked out the center line of that section and basically putting those there and angling it properly. We're done. Just masterful, masterful videography there, Ben. I, I, I apologize for anybody that had to watch that. Onwards. Sorry to lift that up, I don't want that. Okay, Fritz slot cleaning saw is <laughs> actually the perfect tool for this job. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, that, that's already pretty much a friction fit. Um, other side. There is a reason why people don't use the Spanish neck joint. And that's because it, 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 it's not good for the heart. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to make those shorter. But, uh, well, I'm certainly gonna have to make those shorter. Let's have a look. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just going to lightly reduce just a tinsy little bit of rib. We're almost there. Oh, I'm like a millimeter away. Okay, hold on, it's that. Oh, that's so scary. Really should be it now. Ah, okay. It's an hour and a half past lunch. See you in a minute. It worked. All right, then I have eaten and I feel a lot better about life. Uh, let's have a look at this. Why don't we? It's a fantastic method, if you can be bothered. Looks really good, doesn't it? Essentially, it's, it's inlaid and it works really well. As long as you can do maths and figure things out beforehand, I seem to have miscalculated a little bit. One, so that's where my top is, essentially. So, that's not that's not ideal. I mean, it's it's not a deal breaker. It's not it's not where it was supposed to be. It's a couple of millimeters high, and I don't understand that. Uh, I don't understand that, to be frank. But here we go. Until I actually got into it, I hadn't realised that that section there I'd be cutting all the way through, which well, it is what it is. That once it's glued, you'll uh, you'll lose that a little bit. I think I'll actually fill that little gap. But my biggest issue, my biggest issue is how high the bridge is going to be. And as it stands, the bridge the bridge is going to be about ten millimeters high. And I wanted it to be fourteen to sort of sixteen or so. So I, I've made a fundamental calculating error and I, I, I'm going to have to go back to my drawing and double check why and how that has happened. But the end result is that luckily I have a very, very, very easy fix. And that is literally to just, despite the fact that I said I wasn't going to do it earlier in the video, I'm just going to put another piece of this on. Um, that will slightly raise things give me the height that I wanted, and will be easy. In fact, in fact, that piece of scrap is the perfect size. <sighs> I am not going to put a veneer in between it because uh, that multiple layered look, I don't want that. And I am going to bevel the edge of it so that where the joint is will actually be a beveled corner thus hiding the fact that there's a joint and there's two pieces of wood. That combined the fact with the fact that we're staining everything and doing all of this cool finishing will completely hide that it's not a solid piece of wood. In fact, looking at it here, it's only going to be a little bit thicker than the depth of the binding there and will look pretty damn perfect. It is an error. Um, I am embarrassed, yet I am telling you about that because I believe that I need to. So there we go. Anyhow, you've seen me do this before. I'm gonna glue on a piece of this, boop, and I am going to leave that overnight, and then tomorrow morning we're gonna glue this neck in. I'm also going to have to inlay around this edge, around the live edge, we're gonna to have to put in a piece because there's no way to hide the fact that that uh, rib is fitting over there. It just is the way it is. Guitar building is all about finding what goes wrong and fixing it, hopefully invisibly. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We were never going to leave that raw anyway. Uh, it just requires some finessing. I like finessing, don't you? I have glued, shaped, fitted, sorted this little block now. 
I made that a little bit shallower on the face. I'm still going to have to hide it a little bit. There we go. Let's see what you can see. So yeah, that's that's a, a lot better. We'll, I'm, I'm going to see what I think about that. But uh, I also now need to figure out what I want to do with the rest of this here. So, you know, that's where we are. Okay. You can see the line. It's not too much of an issue. And to be frank, I think if I carve a nice bevel, that will be in keeping with the guitar. From here to the glue line, maybe to there. Yeah, let's start with that. Okay. Hmm. Soft and crumbly. So at this stage, I want to find sand just around where the neck is going to be glued in. I don't particularly want to sand the entire neck down today. That makes it easier once we're done. Honestly, that, that's a very, very basic, simple, simple thing. Sand the neck before you glue it in. Sand the body around the neck joint before you glue it in so that you don't have to sand up against in little awkward spaces, etc. How many of you knew that? How many of you hadn't really thought of it? I, I, I'm constantly fighting against my need to, to teach and share knowledge and the, the worry that literally every single person that watches me already knows most of these silly little things. Please, let me know in the comments. Uh, anyway, sanding, I'm happy with this. Uh, once the stain is on, it will be entirely hidden. Couldn't be easier. I have, I have the perfect height now. The top is going to be just underneath the binding, uh, which is also going to hide those holes, as was the plan. The bridge is going to be around about 18, 16 to 18 millimeters. And I am happy with everything. This may be, in spite of all of the insanity, my favorite ever neck joint. I've been uh, known to say many times that I love through necks and I find making a through neck very easy once you've worked out the neck break angle, of course, because there is no joint. You're just gluing a couple of pieces of wood together. This is a little bit more in depth, of course, but there is also no joint. I'm not having to worry about uh, routing a mortise and tenon for an acoustic guitar or, or uh, routing a, a neck pocket for, for an S-type or a Tilly or something like that. I'm, I've got a couple of pieces of wood going in from the sides into the neck at the right angle and position, of course, but that's it. Now, after the fact, I'm going to glue a couple of extra bits in for strength uh, and to sort of tie it all in a little bit more with the top and the back, etc. But once you've got those basics down, this is actually a really easy technique. I did not think that I was going to be saying this at this time yesterday morning. Anyhow, here we have it. She's glued. We're going to leave her for a day or two to, to cure. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Thank you very much for watching. It is going to start going a little bit faster from here on out. Next week, the top will be glued to the body. I am going to be sealing the inside, uh, probably with shellac, 
um, both to slow down moisture transfer, etc., and to make it shine golden. I'm going to have to shield where the electronics are going to be. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm doing with the electronics. I know, don't worry. Uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So yes, thank you for watching. Please uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you think I should be doing in the comments below, and click like, subscribe if you haven't yet. A number of people haven't subscribed. Uh, Patreon, etc. Live stream. Check out the live stream. It's all fun and games. I love you guys. See you soon. Goodbye.